Your smartphone has a treasure of information about you, from personal details like where you bank and private messages with your boss or spouse, to intimate details like medication reminders, doctor's appointments, and even your precise location history. Our phones know everything about us. In recent years, Apple and Google have done a lot in terms of making privacy features and enhancements to help protect some of our data from third-party developers. Jason Perlow and I are going to walk you through a privacy audit of your device today. I'm Jason Cipriani, and this is Jason Squared. So Jason, let's start with the iPhone. I know Apple has made a huge stance over the last few years about how privacy uh, concentrated the company is and how aware they are. And they've done a lot of work in iOS 13 and some more work in iOS 14. So let's say iPhone user wants to go through and audit their privacy controls on iOS 13. Where do they go? Well, you're going to go into the settings app and then you'll scroll down and you'll see privacy. Um, privacy in iOS is grouped under location ser uh, services or tracking. And there's also specific application privileges assigned to specific system services. Um, so location services uh, use GPS, Bluetooth, and crowdsource Wi-Fi hotspots, and also cell tower locations to determine your proximate location. Uh, many apps are able to query any or all these things, and they send this data back to the application's cloud servers. Now, for some applications, you need this in order to actually be, you know, for these apps to function or to be useful at a very basic level, such as for navigation, you know, Google Maps or Apple Maps and Waze. Um, others, such as Yelp and Uber, uh, need this data in order to serve you relevant businesses in your proximity. Um, and others, such as Facebook, uh, use this data not just to serve you geo-relevant information, but also to provide information to themselves, which is then monetized, right? They sell this stuff and they use it for, for ads and all kinds of other things, um, which you may not want them to do at any particular time. So location services can be enabled on an application by application basis or can be turned off entirely, right? So for each application, right? Uh, there's there's a couple different things that you can you can say that they can or can't do. You can say they can never access something. You can say ask the next time that the application attempts to access that thing, right? right. Yep. Um, yep. While using the app, the other is while use only while using the application. So for example, many applications, right, um, may want to pull stuff even though you're not using it. Right, if they're sitting in the background or, or, or whatever, or even when, while they quiesce, they can make a they can make a a, 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 a a query, right? So if you have it while setting while using the app, it'll only do use it while you're actually have it as a foreground task. The other is always, 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 meaning it's always polling or it always has the ability to pull in the whether it's turned off, whether it's in the foreground, any of that, right? Um, and there are re various reasons why you'd want to set these different things. And Jason, you may have some opinions as to why you want to want to have them. Um, tracking um, is is either enabled or disabled via allow apps to request to track, right? And that allows them to use an identifier, right, that can be used to combine your activity across websites and apps that an application developer may use, right? So Facebook, for example, it may have four or five different apps and websites that it uses, right? And for you to have, be, have a consistent experience across Facebook and Instagram and Messenger and whatever else they have, right, they have that tracker identifier, right? They're, they're able yeah. to see what you're yeah. doing. That tracker, um, is that new in iOS 14 or is that part of iOS 13? I thought that was a 14 feature. That might be specific to 14, right? Yeah, that's it's one coming of the features. fairly soon. Um, if you disable this, some functionality integration might not, may not, may not work, right? But we'll see what happens in the next couple months. Um, the other one that's very important that you need to look at is system service level privileges, right? Now, for every single application, right, you can go down the list of system services of what they can or cannot touch. Now, when we mean system services, we're talking about things uh, like your contacts list, your calendar, your reminders, your your photo stream, uh, which is something that I get to see a lot, you know, when, 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 you know, I use Messenger or Facebook and every time you want to browse for a photo, it's going to say, can it, 
can it look at your entire photo stream or do you want to just select additional ones, right? Yeah, that's um, new in we're, iOS 14 as well, which I think is a huge, huge new feature. I, I that's it. why I was doing this broadcast because I suddenly noticed they're doing it. And I'm like, where's this stuff coming from? And like, oh, it's my system, it's my system services, right? Yeah. So you have your your health counters, research centers, home kit, media files, and motion tracking. Um, those are all the different system services that applications can potentially touch. Now, there are a lot of apps that don't need half of these and you can turn them off. Um, and the next time, and if an application does attempt to query them, if you have them turned off, you can decide whether or not to assign it or not, right? Yeah. Um, then you've got things for analytics and improvements and Apple advertising, which I think might also be um, iOS 14 specific, right? Um, but, I believe so. Uh, there's some in there that is, some isn't, but there's some changes. Yeah, there. analytics is stuff that Apple specifically uses so you can help them improve their products, right? This is like telemetry and metadata type stuff. In theory, it's harmless, but you know, you, you never know with, with these sort of things. Someone could make a mistake in a in a in an applic in a in a in a bug or something, and it accidentally starts sending data that you didn't want them to send, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And Apple advertising is things like you know the App Store and, and stuff like that. You know where, where they're showing you specific Apple um, ads off their ad network. Uh, so so what are, so what are your feelings about some of these, Jason? Yeah. So the one thing I would add about location tracking is, a few years back, Apple added these one-time use or ask next time location toggles. And what happened was, especially for apps like Facebook and Twitter and other social networks, is they, they realized everybody turns off location access for them. And they need that location data, not only to show relevant stuff that's nearby, but they also make a ton of money off of that, that data. So what they started doing is using nearby Bluetooth beacons and Wi-Fi networks to get an approximate location of your data. They would map every network and yep. with that map, they would be able to tell where you were at. So when you updated iOS 13, you probably noticed an increase in apps requesting to access your Wi-Fi or nearby Wi-Fi networks. And it's not because they were trying to connect to networks. It's because they're trying to figure out where you're at. So I would go through the privacy settings. So settings, privacy, and then look through all of that and deny Wi-Fi access because they're still tracking your location if that yep. is enabled, as well as Bluetooth. And then also adjust, you know, your microphone settings. You know, there's there's that rumor that Facebook listens to your microphone and no one's ever been able to prove it and, you know, to serve you relevant ads. And I'll admit, I, it's creepy stuff has happened to me as well. Stuff I've talked about, never searched for, shows up in an ad. I don't know how they're doing it, but if you're paranoid about it, you could turn off microphone access to various apps. But go point by point through the privacy settings um, iOS 14, speaking of microphone, iOS 14 is adding two new, uh, I guess, privacy dots that will show up on your home screen. It's right above your signal meter, your cellular bar uh, in the top right corner of your iPhone. There'll be an orange or a green dot that shows up. The green dot indicates your camera is being accessed. The orange dot indicates your microphone is being accessed. And so if you see that, something, an app or some sort of service is accessing that particular function of your iPhone. If you swipe down and view control center, it tells you exactly which app is using that, that portion of your device. So I've had iOS 14 installed for three weeks now, I think. Yeah, three weeks. And not once has Facebook or Instagram been accessing that information when it wasn't supposed to. And actually I have it disabled for all of it. So it hasn't been accessing any of that information. So there's going to be some glimpses into the future of what, uh, or glimpses into what components are being accessed on your device once iOS 14 launches. And another location enhancement they're adding is you'll be able to choose if you want an app when it requests your location, if you want to give it your exact precise location, or if you would rather give it just your generalized location, which means more or less the city you're in or the I think park. that's great. That's oh, awesome. It's amazing. Yeah. Like yeah. when I look up Yelp, restaurants i don't need them to know what block i'm on yeah it'll help find something no within no no you distance. need to be within a few miles that you know that's fine yeah. i mean I'm, I'm usually that. traveling when i use yelp and so i'm willing to hop on you know public transportation or or, or walk to that restaurant so it'll it'll give you a more generalized and you could go if you change your mind later on and want to change that again settings privacy it's where you're where you can control it you know another option if you want to see 
what Facebook has access to instead of having to go through each category is just open up the settings app and scroll down until you get to the list of apps that are installed on your device and then tap on that and it'll show which privacy settings that it has access to and which you've turned off and then you can manually control it right then and there. It's a little bit more streamlined way of doing it, but also it's a little messy because if you have a lot of apps like I do, that list is very, very long. So, you know, you could adjust it either way. And so I guess we should maybe dive into Android now, which is similar, but not. And it has some improvements coming with Android 11, which should launch in a couple months. Um, you know, Google hasn't really been the same privacy advocate that Apple has over the last few years. But we have to give them credit. They've done a lot of work with Android in, in terms of preventing apps from running in the background and accessing stuff. I mean, Android apps could run in the background indefinitely. It's a difference, fundamental difference between iOS and Android. And if they're accessing things like your location all the time, it's some pretty good data they could sell and make a lot of money off of. So with Android 10, when you open your Android device and you look at location or you launch an app for the first time on an Android device and it requests your location, you could either allow all the time, just this once or never. You're not given too many options. iOS or Android 11 changes that a little bit um, to ask next time or, and kind of refines that permission to, you know, single time use. There, there's a new option where it'll ask you just this time. So the next time you launch the app, you'll have to grant that permission again. And it does the same thing for the microphone as well as the camera. So you don't want Snapchat to always have access to your camera. You could say just this time you'll be able to control those at any time in settings, privacy, permissions manager. Uh, and then there's also a new feature coming in Android 11 that after a certain amount of time, I think it's like 30 days, 60 days, something like that, that you haven't used an app, it resets all permissions to default. Revoke. That's really cool. I wish iOS did that. Yeah, me too. I, it's, it's something Apple should steal. Android steals from iOS. iOS needs to steal this from Android. And I think we talked about it a few weeks ago on the show. Yeah, I, lo I like the justice once thing in Android. That, I mean, iOS doesn't have that. It would be great if they could do that, but they don't. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you, and so it resets it to default. I mean, it's like you never in, launched the app after you installed it and granted it any permissions. And this will stop apps from serotypically stealing your data in the background or accessing your data in the background. There's another aspect of Android privacy settings that is called accessibility special access. And these are apps that usually draw over the screen, which means let's say Facebook Messenger and the chat heads. You have to grant that accessibility access in order for it to what's considered or referred to as draw over the screen, put those little bubbles on your screen. So I use 1Password as my password manager I have to grant it accessibility access in order to fill out forms or passwords in Chrome or any other of the browsers, which also grants it full access to a lot of other aspects of my device. I'm okay with it, I trust 1Password, but if you installed some random game or some random app, forgot about it, never used it again, and you had to, as part of using that, grant it accessibility access, probably should go in settings, privacy, and check out what has access to those. It's kind of like root access, not that far at all, but it, you know, it's a higher level of privileges than just location access. And so go through and audit those as well, because you may have some random app on there that's accessing stuff or, you know, can control stuff that you don't want at any given time. So have you messed with these privacy settings at all on Android 10? Um, you know what? I, a little bit, I mean, you know, Android, Android is not my, my main OS that I yeah. use for, for yeah. playing around with, but you know, generally speaking, you know, I, if, if an application pop, you know, gets installed new and it asks for permission, I, I, each time that I install an app, um, I allow it or disallow it depending on, on what it does. Right. So it's, it's, but you, you have to be like diligent with this stuff. Cause you can forget what you did or, or, or if you hit the wrong thing accidentally, right. Cause like, you know, it's kind of like when you, when you install an application, even on a, on a PC or a Mac, right. You, you just go through the defaults. You're saying, okay, 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 okay. And you're not yeah. realizing yeah. what you're allowing. So you have to review this. You sh really should be reviewing all this stuff at least on a monthly basis to see to make sure you didn't make a mistake or, or, or something like that. You know, it's, it's, yeah. Normally what I recommend is go through your device once a month, 
delete the apps that you downloaded, thought yeah, maybe you were going to Yeah, absolutely delete your apps. Del yeah, just completely sure. remove yeah. apps. And then when you're done removing those apps, whatever's left, go through the privacy settings and make sure that those apps only have access to what you want them to have access to. Uh, you know, like I said at the beginning, our, our devices are very private devices and intimate devices. And I don't, I know a lot of people who still don't even use a passcode or face ID or touch ID or whatever That's it is. That's crazy, right? That's and, completely crazy. And I try to explain it to them every time the topic comes up about, think about what's in those conversations you have with your wife or your husband, or, you know, those emails you have from work that include bank information, anyone finds your phone. They have full access to that. There's nothing stopping them. And it's a similar approach to auditing the privacy settings for your phone or for the apps on your phone as well. It, you allow, like you said, going through and just hitting, okay, yes, approve, approve. Let me use the app. I don't care about this. And you allow the wrong app access to the wrong type of information and data on your phone. You know, that they're going to make a lot of money off of that. And potentially, you know, it could have some, uh, you know, less than ideal consequences for oh, you agreed. as well. So any closing thoughts, Jason? So you know, you, you folks may notice that we haven't talked anything about web browsers, right? Uh, so yeah. that's the thing we're going to reserve for another show because we think that the mobile browser integration, right? And, and also and you, for, for a lot of the same reason, these browsers act very similarly on the PC and the Mac as well. Um, because they're, we're almost using the same exact code bases now for, mm -hmm. for, 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 for that. Um, there, that'll be a completely separate show and there's a lot of things you have to consider for mobile browsers and also for things like um, content blockers, right? Each, each of these, these mobile operating systems have the ability to use third-party content blockers, content blockers as well, uh, which affects privacy-related stuff. So we'll, we'll be going into that separately. Yeah, iOS 14 and Mac OS Big Sur add quite a bit to Safari. Um, they actually have content quite a lot. Yeah. blockers built into it, and they'll tell you how many trackers are on a website. And there's there's a ton of stuff baked in there, and then we just didn't have time to fit all of that into this show. It's worthy of its own, uh, I believe, and, and you agree. So that's good. And so, yeah, definitely look out for that. We'll be working on that over the coming weeks, and uh, we'll take a deeper dive into Chrome, Safari, probably Edge as well, as, and uh, their respectable or respective settings. Um, for Jason Perlow, I'm Jason Cipriani, and this is Jason Squared. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We truly appreciate it. Make sure to check out more of our work at ZDNet.com.